So I went in there and probably was sitting behind, you know, when he always had these coffee table type uh, desks and uh, sitting there with one leg up, looked real serene, you know. And so I was real nervous, my hand was shaking and I gave him the rose and laid down on the floor like the other devotees were doing and, and I did my uh, prayers in English and I couldn't help myself from shaking from being in his presence. And uh, then uh, when we all sat up, there was like 12 new devotees and Prabhupada said, uh, so you're all very fortunate to come to Lord Chaitanya's movement and now that you are fortunate, you should make others fortunate. Preach this message to Lord Chaitanya's all over the world. And he went on speaking for like 20 minutes. And he also said that if we served uh, Vishnu, John, and Tamal nicely, that he would be happy. And, uh, and so that's the first time I saw Prabhupada. And up to that point, Prabhupada never said anything personally, personally to me, except you know when he gave me my name in Chicago with a big initiation and my Gayatri uh, uh, initiation in Vrindavan. Um, so I got, went all the way, got there, got to the house, and uh, Prabhupada was given darshan at the time, and he's sitting in a room smaller than this room here. Uh, you know how the Indian houses are there. Uh, and he was sitting behind the coffee table. There was a screen door there, and, and Tamal Krishna Maharaj asked me to uh, pass out sweets to the guests that left. And the room was packed with people. And so that, I just got there, and here I am with a box of sweets at the door, and Prabhupada was just, you know, right there uh, speaking. And uh, so Prabhupada noticed someone outside, and I didn't think anybody else could fit in the room because they were all sitting like this, you know. The room was packed, and Prabhupada asked me to let him in. And so when I opened the door to let him in, uh, uh, another person went out the door at the same time he came in, and they kind of crossed, and I, I didn't give him prasadam. So Prabhupada asked me, did you give him prasadam? And I said, well, no, Prabhupada. You know, he, and Prabhupada said, this boy is incompetent. He turned to Tamal and I, and Tamal says, all right, Gauri Das, uh, go downstairs and I'll talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I thought, I'm finished, that's it. You know, I, I gave my whole life to Prabhupada and I thought, I displeased the spiritual master, I'm going to get sent to Africa, back to Bombay. So the Ganges was right there, this house was on the bank of the Ganges. And uh, I went down to the Ganges and I was remembering Vishnu John Swami the story about him, that's another one um, I can tell in a little bit. Um, and so I was sitting there on a rock in the r river and I was thinking I should just drown myself right now, you know, I was crying. And about 20 minutes later, Tamal came down, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, and he kind of laughed and he said, Gauri Das, don't take it so seriously. Go up and clean Prabhupada's room. And I was surprised because I thought he was going to send me, and he had that authority to do that. And uh, so I, you know, I washed my face and straightened my dhoti up and, and uh, went into Prabhupada's room and it was just uh, Prabhupada still sitting there and Upendra was the only one there and he gave me a broom and he said sweep, sweep the floor here. So I started sweeping and I felt really like uh, really ashamed that I was such a fool and uh, but I felt like Prabhupada was looking at me so I looked over at him and he just smiled like anything and I just wow you know how, so all that anxiety just went and uh, Jai Prabhupada and I started sweeping real fast. And, I got to go on a few morning walks with him there uh, in Hawaii. He'd go to Magic Island and, and walk out there and you can get out to the point where you can see the surfers because it goes way out and there's surfers right there. And uh, he stood there one day and he said, uh, they're sea sufferers. They're preparing to take sharks and dolphin bodies. And uh, uh, then another day he said, uh, uh, like a, a day or two uh, after that, he said, they have mystic power. They're walking on water. I cannot do that. Uh, there is a lot of nice stories actually in Hawaii. Um, he walked through the prasadam room and he saw a grain of rice on the floor. And he said, whoever has spilled that rice will have to suffer. That's Krishna. His prasadam should not be wasted. Uh, another time, Sukadeva was, uh, he was cooking for Prabhupada. And uh, he was by his uh, desk. You should probably get some pastimes from Sukadeva. Uh, he tells the story real well. Uh, but he caught a bug and he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, what should I do with this bug? And Prabhupada said, take him to the window. And so, you know, Sukadeva says, who, who can you ask anybody else what to do with a bug? They'd think you're crazy, but Prabhupada, you could ask him anything like that. And, you know, uh, so he also, they asked him if they could uh, spray the cockroaches in the temple. And Prabhupada uh, said, no, it's simply you're unclean. You're lazy, so you don't want to clean. So you want to just uh, leave it dirty, then just keep killing the cockroaches. So he didn't want, unless it was, this, you know, extreme... Uh, 
really uh, extreme emergency he didn't want. And that reminds me of another story in Bombay. Uh, I just became Prabhupada's servant, and uh, Tamal was asking him, what about mosquitoes? Can we kill mosquitoes? And Prabhupada said, only if they're biting you. If they're biting you, you can, you can kill them. But before that, you can't, uh, you can't kill them. I used to be a real fancy Chamra fanner. I'd do the cheddar, you know, like, you know, I'd get up there, and I thought I was the best Chamra guy. And, and so then that's what I was doing for Prabhupada in the garden. Two or three hours every morning, I'd fan him with the Chamra. And so uh, one morning, Prabhupada, you know, he had three sets of Japa beads, a little one, a medium one, and a real big one. And we had them all there by his yasas, and he'd pick out whatever one he wanted that day. Uh, so he was sitting there chanting, and uh, his eyes were shut, and a fly landed right above his lip here. And I, and I thought, oh, what am I going to do? So I took my finger, and I got real close to him without touching him, and I was going like that, but the fly just kept walking around, and he wouldn't leave. And so after a minute, Prabhupada opened one eye and looked at me, and I jumped back a little bit, you know, because I was kind of close to him. And he said, you are fanning around the world, but you can't get the fly off my face. Give me that chamra. And so he took the chamra, and he, he, could, he said, do like this, and he fanned it right on his face. And, uh, and so uh, a few minutes later, it happened again, the fly landed, and, and I was a little bit hesitant, but I brushed it on his face, and then he nodded and said, yes, very nice. The temple room was full of devotees, and one of the big book distributors asked Prabhupada, kind of a uh, pointed question, Prabhupada, what pleases you the most? And Prabhupada uh, said that if you develop your love for Krishna, that will please me the most. And all the devotees, the cooks, the pujaris, are Jai Prabhupada. So that was real nice to hear that. Uh, he was sitting in the garden. He used to, in the morning, uh, Prabhupada would either chant, listen to kirtan, have letters read to him by Tamal, and, and he would dictate a response. Tamal would type out the letter, and then Prabhupada he would read the letter to Prabhupada the next day and Prabhupada would sign the letter. So something like that was usually going on. So tomorrow, this day, Tamal was sitting there and he got up and left the garden. And uh, Prabhupada noticed the keys were there. He, he left the keys and he told me to give me those keys. So uh, I picked up the keys. I was fanning them with the charmer. That was my duty in the garden every day for like two or three hours as long as he stayed in the garden from like 6.30 to about 9, 9.30. He'd sit in the garden with the fountain running. The fountain always had to be running. He was very fond of the, uh, the fountain uh, and the sound it made, you know, very serene. And uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of garden stories too. But uh, 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 so he put the keys under his dhoti there uh, and he told me to go get Tamal. So I ran out in the front and I said, Prabhupada wants to see you. Uh, and he came out and Prabhupada said, I want my sapphire ring out of the safe. And so Tamal goes, you know, feels for his keys and looks around. And uh, he goes, okay, Prabhupada, and he goes off. And then about five minutes later, Prabhupada said, go get Tamal again. So I went out in the front, and uh, Tamal was like, you know, looking, tearing up his office, looking for the keys. And he said, Gauri Das, have you seen my keys? And I didn't want to lie to a sannyasi, so I just threw my hands up and looked kind of dumb. And so he, uh, I said, Prabhupada wants to see you now. And he goes, he goes, uh, well, run up to the bathroom and see if I left the keys up there. And I said, I can't leave Prabhupada alone that long. I have to go back out there. So he comes out again, and Prabhupada said, where's my ring? And he said, I'm just, just now getting it, Prabhupada, and you know, I'll be right back. And so he goes off again, and Prabhupada shook his head. And, uh, you know, he looks at me, kind of smiles. And, and then he waited a few more minutes. He goes, go get Tamal again, the third time. So I got him, and Prabhupada said, where's my ring? And he started to make another excuse. <laughs> And uh, Prabhupada pulled the keys out and dangled them in front of him. And he goes, here, you rascal. Uh, if anything is stolen, it's your fault for giving him the chance. So Prabhupada was very secure. Everything had to be locked in the safe. Or, you know, uh, he was very secure, conscious. He said also one time that uh, I have millions of dollars, but I don't waste one farthing of Krishna's money, which reminds me of another story with, uh, where Upinder got chastised. He sent Upinder to the store to get an eye washer, a little glass. They put rose water in it. And you, you put it in your eye, you know, rinse it out. And so Prabhupada at the time was very sick and he was getting some, some uh, mucus in his eyes. And so uh, Pinder went and Prabhupada, he got back, Prabhupada asked him, how much did you pay for the uh, eye washer? And he said, four rupees, which at the time was only, it was eight rupees to a dollar, it was like 25 cents. So Prabhupada said, four rupees? He goes, it's only worth one rupee. It should have been one rupee, maybe two rupees, but you have spent four rupees. You've wasted Krishna's money. And it just blasted him for 20 minutes, and Pinder was just like, 
totally fried, you know. Whenever Prabhupada chastised, so, oh, it was just, it was just, uh, it was so heavy. Guru, you know, Guru means heavy, so. Uh, but then the thing, like my experience in Rishikesh, he chastised you one minute, but he didn't do it begrudgingly, and the next minute he'd smile at you. And he only did it when it was, uh, when, it, when the disciple could take it. So, you know, Prabhupada didn't want to see any money wasted. So, Yisodhana was reading to him. He asked him, Prabhupada, how is it that uh, you, you wrote these books yourself? Why is it you like to hear them again? You know what these books are. He said, I did not write these books. Krishna wrote these books. Uh, one day he was reading, I believe it was the Sri Yashopanishad, uh, and Prabhupada asked him to read that last paragraph again. And he read it again. And Prabhupada said, these are not my words. They're changing my words. Write them immediately and tell them, do not change my words. He turned to Tamal and he said, is my English not good? And Tamal said, your English is perfect, Prabhupada. And he said, then why are they changing? He said, do not become like a leapfrog and try to jump over your spiritual master. This is the worst thing a disciple can do. Uh, write them immediately and tell them, do not change my books. And he got very angry. Uh, it was the angriest I ever saw Prabhupada get. Uh, so it was very important uh, that Prabhupada wanted only spelling errors, grammatical errors to be changed and nothing else. One time uh, we carried Prabhupada, they were building the Gurukul in, in Vrindavan in 77, uh, the last year there. And uh, so we carried him in the rocking chair up to, to take a tour of it. And as we were going through to the different you know, areas, the body would say, this is my room, Prabhupada. Another one, this is my room, Prabhupada, and this is for this. Prabhupada got mad and he said, you're all so concerned about yourselves, your own rooms. I built this school for the kids. Fill it up. Fill it up with students. This is for the students. And uh, he, he got upset about that. Uh, then as we were carrying him back to, the, to his room, uh, when we went by, we were carrying him in the chair, they were chanting in the temple room. They knew Prabhupada was going by. So they were, Jai Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhupada said, what are they chanting? And uh, we said, they're chanting Jai Prabhupada. And he said, I do not like this. Tell them to chant Hare Krishna. So, I mean, it's okay a few times, but he didn't want it to go on and on and on and on. He, he never did that. Another uh, pastime in Hawaii is, uh, you know, Hawaii is very nice and tropical, so the devotees would bring Prabhupada a lot of fruits, nice, you know, uh, lilikoi, passion fruit, but his favorite, of course, is the mango. And so there's like 40 varieties of mangoes in Hawaii. And so the devotee asked Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, uh, what kind of mango do you prefer? We have so many kinds here. Which kind do you want me to bring you? And Prabhupada said, the ones from the eastern side of the tree. He didn't really care the brand, but the eastern side of the tree because it gets the morning sun, he explained, and the morning sun gives the prana and is the best fruit. Every day, uh, Upendra and sometimes Bhakti Tree would cook Prabhupada's lunch, and they'd toil away in the kitchen for like three hours, making everything so nice. And uh, they would, then Upendra would bring the plate to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada would just wave it off, distribute, distribute. Uh, sometimes I would, uh, I would distribute the plate. And Prabhupada, one time, he saw the devotee's point, and I want this, I want that. Prabhupada said, mix it all together, they should not discriminate. So we, I mushed it all together, you know, sweets and vegetables and rice and everything, into a big mishmash. And then, then the devotees were like, you're making faces and, you know, uh, Prabhupada said, you shouldn't discriminate if you, you know, here's the maha, if you want it or not. And, uh, but every day, uh, you know, Pinder was toiling to bring this plate, big plate, you know, a huge plate, uh, probably 16 inches across, round, and, you know, five kinds of vegetables, fancy rice, you know, bitter melon, uh, you know, lemon, and ginger, make everything really nice, and uh, probably just distribute. This went on for like a whole month, you know, about a month, the month of June. And uh, near Jolly Codice, he came up, and uh, I fasted all day, Pinder fasted all day, and it was like 110 degrees at that time. So uh, the next morning, I was just so weak. Even that, that day, during the evening, I was just about ready to, my knees were gonna buckle. I felt like, how can I continue this? But, I thought, but somehow or another, I did it. And so the next day, when Upindra brought Prabhupada's plate and probably waved it off, Upindra just couldn't believe it. He said, Prabhupada, how is it? We're young boys, and if we fast for one day, we can hardly move. And here you are fasting for 30 days now. How do you do it? And uh, Prabhupada said, I am living proof that the soul is not dependent on the body for subsistence, but rather the body is dependent on the soul. Uh, and so it's like, you know, uh, 
we, so we were just overwhelmed with, even though Prabhupada was getting ready to leave the planet, he was still so Krishna conscious and um, uh, uh, free from the bodily designation. And uh, the happiest time, I think, out of all the service I did for Prabhupada, the simplest thing made him the happiest. I was waiting for him to come up, and I took his uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Fourth Canto, Part Four, and I was sitting in front of his desk, and I was just reading it, waiting for him to come up. And so that, that night he came up a little earlier than I expected. And so they just carried him through the circular stairs in the back. You carry him in the rocking chair. It's a tight squeeze. Only two people can carry him. Up. And they, they carried him right in. And as soon as I saw him, I put the book on his desk and did my obeisances. And Prabhupada asked me, what are you reading? And I said, oh, it's your Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada, Fourth Canto, Part Four. And he just smiled like anything. And Tamal Krishna was standing there. And he said, this is very good. He's reading in his spare time. This is very good. And uh, so I was just like, wow, you know, you know. I mean, I was out there in the hot sun, 110 degrees, spraying the windows and, and, and you know, doing all this service in the hot sun. He never said anything about that, but when he saw me reading, he was very pleased. So uh, all these devotees would be coming, and uh, Srupa Damodar Maharaj came, and uh, he was a little distant. Uh, the, you know, this was in the morning in the garden, and there was only a couple people there, devotees. And Prabhupada asked uh, who that was because uh, he was like uh, a distance away and I said that's Srupa Dhamadhar Maharaj and he said call him over here. So uh, he sat right by Prabhupada and he began t telling Prabhupada about his Bombay uh, scientist preaching program they just did uh, before that, before he got there. And Prabhupada, uh, he just, he, you know, before he got there he looked a little morose to me by my material vision. Uh, but when he, when he started talking about that scientific preaching he just sat up like a light bulb, he was beaming, and he was pointing with his finger, and the skin was shaking off his bone. There was just a bone here, and the skin was hanging off it, and the skin was flapping. And he, and, he, and he said, actually, I appeared in this world for two reasons, to establish Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to defeat these rascal scientists, and you are doing this. I'm very pleased. Uh, and he just went on for a couple hours talking about this, and, and he wanted this very much. So Tamal mentioned to Prabhupada that uh, they'd been d doing an investigation about where Vishnu John, you know, they had his passport, he couldn't have left India without it, he didn't apply for a new one. Some Brahmins came to the Delhi temple and said that a white sannyasi had come to Rishikesh, I mean to uh, Hardwar, I mean Prayag, excuse me, Prayag, where uh, uh, Chodhari Das committed suicide. And uh, they paid, this white sannyasi paid them to take him out in a boat and chant mantras so he wouldn't take a ghost body. He tied rocks to himself and jumped off the boat. So some white swami did that. So when they put all the pieces together, they realized that must have been Vishnu John. He hasn't been seen since. So Tamal mentioned that to Prabhupada, that we really think he did commit suicide. And he asked Prabhupada, do you know where Vishnu John is, Prabhupada? And Prabhupada uh, began to cry. Not, I mean, you know, the tears came. And he said, Vishnu John is very advanced. First he said he did not have to do that. And, but, but then when he asked him, First he said, when he heard the story, he did not have to, he did not have to do that. And then Tamal said, Prabhupada, do you know where Vishnu John is? And he said, uh, he's very advanced. He's still chanting Hare Krishna. He's very advanced. And then about two weeks later, Prabhupada, when he woke up in the morning, he said that Vishnu John was chanting to him in, at nighttime. Like Chodhari Das came back and chanted for Lord Chaitanya. But one morning, uh, I got, the, got everything set up, turned the fountain on. Uh, and then I noticed there was one little bush in his, in his garden that had four little white flowers on it. So I thought, well, I'll pick these and put them on his Yasa sun. And I put them on the pillow there. As soon as he sat down, he picked them up and started smelling them. And he smelled, he held them the whole two hours there. Uh, then the next morning when he sat down, he put it, I, I was standing there and he put his hand out to me. You know, and I thought, oh, he wants flowers. But that little bush isn't going to have any more flowers because I picked them all yesterday. So uh, he didn't say anything, but I knew that I should go look for those flowers. I look at the bush, and uh, I went over there, and to my surprise, there was eight flowers on that little plant. It was just one foot by a little teeny plant, and uh, I went, "Wow!" So I picked the eight flowers and I took them back, gave them to Prabhupada, and uh, he smelled them. And then he said, uh, "Simply by smelling this particular type of flower, which is like a little white pakaki or mogra, I'm not sure exactly what the name was, but..." I, like, like, it looks like a small gardenia, a little white flower. He said it smelled really good. Simply by smelling this particular type of flower, it regulates your life errors. So, you know, Prabhupada saw a reason for everything. He didn't do it for sense gratification. He offered it to Krishna. 
Krishna's you know energy, and uh, then every day uh, after that, uh, this little bush would produce uh, you know a whole bunch of flowers that I put them there every day, and probably would smell them every day, and so that was uh, a pretty mystical. Another one of the things that proved to me that Krishna was directly protecting Prabhupada and providing for him. At about mm, about seven o'clock, Prabhupada's car pulled up in front of the temple, and. Uh, and, you know, I knew he couldn't walk anymore. I don't know if most of the devotees didn't know it was that serious. So we had a rocking chair at the car ready, and he got in the rocking chair, and, and he said, take me to see the deities. Uh, so we carried him up in front of uh, Isoda Nanan was, was there, Swami. He was a Swami at the time. And he used to, you probably told this story, but uh, he used to carry Prabhupada a lot because he's so strong. He used to try to get the strongest devotees. And uh, so he carried him in front of Gorni Thai, and Prabhupada uh, stood up, and he, uh, you know, uh, did his respects, and and uh, tears began to come down his cheeks, and uh, stood there for a few minutes, and then he started to sit down, and somebody had taken the chair away, and so he almost fell, you know. So Tamal Krishna, had, you know, the other devotee had to had to had to support him, and so uh, you know, get that chair back here. So we got the chair back, and uh, then the devotees were all looking at each other like, wow, you know, Prabhupada is sick. Uh, so then he went over to Krishna Balaram uh, altar and he stood up again. Of course, this time the chair was held there. And again, tears came down his cheeks. And then he went over to uh, Radha Shamasinder and uh, Balita Vishaka and uh, gazed at them for a while. And uh, then he turned and he said, I want to see all the devotees in my room. So we carried him into his room, sat behind his desk, and, uh, and all the devotees packed into the room. And uh, of course, there wasn't enough room for all the devotees, and they were like looking in the doors and in the windows and crawling up on each other. And everywhere you looked, all you seen was devotees. Uh, and and uh, Prabhupada began to say that, uh, so I have come here to leave my body, uh, but you should not lament because I've given you everything in my books. And if you simply read my books and cooperate with your god brothers, everything will go on nicely. Uh, and the devotees at that time, uh, Half of them began to cry, oh no, Prabhupada, you can't leave us. And Prabhupada just said the same thing over and over. I am in my books. Uh, you know, read my books. Cooperate. <laughs> Prachu 